Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. In this first chapter of Applied Mathematics, we will cover the topic of first order ordinary differential equations. And in this week, I will go to the introduction, the overview of ODEs, which consists of dependent and independent variables, the classification of differential equations, the solution of differential equations, general and particular solution, and also the last one is initial value and boundary value problem. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to determine the characteristic of ordinary differential equation. And also, you need to determine and find the general solutions of separable equation and its application. Actually, for the first learning uh, objective, we'll cover in this week. And then, for the second learning objective, we'll cover in the, in the next week. And also, the last learning objective here, you need to know how to determine and find the general solution of linear equation and also its application. Before we go further, let's now we go to the introduction of differential equations. Actually, differential equations are essential in analyzing and solving complex problems of various fields, such as here engineering, sciences, disease outbreak, and also economics. We'll go for the example of the sum of the application of the ordinary differential equations. So, these are the application of first order ODE. The first thing that we can go to the problem of falling parachutist problem. And in this case, the velocity time graph of the parachute, if you see here, how to get the, this graph, you need to solve ordinary differential equation that represent this problem, which is in terms of, for example, dy dx, and y, for example, here is a velocity, and the x here is a time, which is represent the x axis, and the velocity represent y axis. When you want to plot this one, you need to solve the ordinary differential equation that is the rate of change for the velocity respect to the rate of change of the time. So that when you solve that one, you can get the pattern of the velocity as the time increases. Another application of ordinary differential equation, we can go to the dynamic population of the prey and predator. As we can see here, the prey, for example, is the deer and then the predator for this case is a jaguar. So, the population dynamic of this prey predator can be represented by the rate of change for the number of that population which is respect to the time. If you see, because we have here two species, means that your differential equation will be in the system of two ordinary differential equation so that when you solve that equation, you can get the system of representing the first one is for prey and the second one is for predator. So this one is a population dynamic of the prey and predator. That is, this one you can get it uh, based on the interaction between prey predator and you can see here the x axis is a time. Okay, In this case, it's, it is in terms of year. Now we go to another application of first order ordinary differential equations, which is COVID-19 outbreak. So class, in this case, it is just uh, exposure to you, but you will not learn in this uh, topic because actually this is a system of ODE which consists of four ordinary differential equations. So, the application of first order ODE can be also used for the outbreak disease. For example, in this case, we go to the COVID-19 outbreak, you can see we have four types of differential equation, which is here just in general, this S is susceptible person. The population of the, for example, Malaysian exposed to the COVID-19. And then you here is unquarantined, infected means that the person who is unquarantined and also infected and this person will also expose the virus to other person and then this Q represent the quarantine infected means that if that person infected and being quarantined we can model that system by using this kind of equation and the C here is a confirmed infected person so actually we can model COVID-19 outbreak in terms of ordinary differential equation 
And when you solve this one, you can get the pattern of all this simulation. The pattern of the unquarantined infected, the pattern of the quarantine confirmed and also infected cases. Now we go in details. We have learned about the application of the ODE in terms of general. So now we want to go to how can we model falling parachutes using ordinary differential equations. If you can see this figure, it is represented by the only single equation. There is only single graph. So that in this case, you only have a single equation or one equation for ordinary differential equation. How can we model this system? It starts with the Newton's second law, which is Newton's second law is given by F equal to MA. And this F is a net force. And then this M is represented by mass of the object. A here is acceleration rate of change of vertical velocity with respect to time. If I write here dv dt equal to f over m, why I get this one? Because from the Newton's second law, I have f equal to m a. And this a also can be represented by dv dt. So I have here f equal to m dv dt when i move this m to this side i will got dv dt equal to f over m which is net force over mass of the object where f here equal to f u plus f t which is f u is upward force of resistance and it is represented by negative c which is c is some constant times velocity and then f d to mg and it is represented the downward pull of gravity. So here Fd equal to the mass times gravity. When we model the falling parachutes of this ODE, we will got here our dv dt will be equal to Fu plus Fd because originally we have here F when this F is substituted with Fu plus Fd so we'll have equal to Fu plus Fd divided by m. But in our case, Fu is given by negative Cv. Means that we have equal to negative Cv plus Fd is Mg. So plus Mg divided by M. When I rearrange this equation, I will have got here G minus C times V over M. So the final equation that represent the rate of change for the velocity respect to rate of change of time is given by gravity, which is g, minus a constant c times a velocity at that time, divided by m. And then, the question arises here, how can we find the terminal velocity of the falling object? In this case, you can get the terminal velocity, which is terminal velocity is given by V at time T equal to the last time, okay, when the parachute reach the ground, okay? And then, to get this V, we can solve equation by using any analytical method that you will learn in this chapter or you can solve it by using numerical method that you learn in chapter 4 but when we solve using numerical method we will have here error because numerical method is just approximate method but the analytical method here refer to the exact method means that what you will learn in this chapter later is the exact method to solve this kind of differential now we go to the second problem, which is you have learned in general about prey predator. So now we go to the equation involving prey predator population influence each other. And it, this model was developed by Loka and Watera. These two person, okay, Loka and Watera, which is developed this equation and the equation we call it as Loka Watera equations. And if you see here, the equation that represented prey can be represented by dx dt here. So x here is a number of prey. And then the equation that represents predator is given by dy dt. So here y is a number of predator. The dynamic behavior of the interaction between prey and predator can be represented by the equation of alpha x minus beta xy 
And then for dy dt, it is equal to negative gamma y plus delta xy. Whereas here, when we have here xy in our equation, so we know that it involves interaction between x and y. So the interaction here are between prey and predator. What does it mean by all the notations here? X here represents the number of prey. Y is number of predator. Alpha is a growth rate of the prey population. And beta is the rate of predation upon the prey. Means that it involves interaction. Gamma represents the rate of loss of the predator population. So not involve interaction here because it is just rate of loss for the predator. And the delta represents the growth rate of the predator population. So, based on this one, local and water are developed the dynamic equation that can represent the prey predator, which is given by these two equations. So, class, this is the visualization of some cases or some problem involving prey predator. So, if you see here, for the first graph, we have here mullet and lemon sharks. There is mullet here is a prey and the lemon sharks is a predator. You can see the dynamic behavior. Whereas the blue color equation or blue color graph here is for prey and the purple color graph is the is for lemon shark. And then the next one is the population of lemon shark, mullet and jacks. So here you can see for the blue one is for the mullet. And then the purple one is for the lemon shark and the, the green one is for jack. If we have here three graph, means that in this case you need to have three dynamic equations that represent this population. So here in this case, mullet and jack is a prey and then lemon shark actually is a predator. So this is dynamical behavior, the visualization of the prey predator that we can get. The solution to represent this graph by using local water equation. Now let's we go to this example 1.1. You need to write a differential equation that fits the physical description as follows. The first one we have the rate of change of the population P. So here we have the notation P means that rate of change of this population P we can represent by dP which is of at time t, so it is at time that is respect to the time t that is proportional, so this is proportional to the population at time t. Means that it is proportional to a population at time t, so it is proportional to the p. Means that here, for this kind of equation, you need to put here some constant k because this constant k will give a rate, either it is going up or going down, depends on the value of. When I change this equation, I have here dp dt equal to k. And then for the second one, we have here the rate of change in the temperature t. Means that here we have rate of change for the temperature t of coffee at time t. So it respect to the rate of time t is proportional to the difference between the temperature that is proportional to the difference between temperature m of the air at time t and the temperature of the coffee at time t. We know that the temperature of the coffee at time t is given by t. So the difference means that here it is m minus t. The difference between this m and t, it is actually you have to put here some constants. So let's say we use here same notation k. When we change to the equation, we have dp d small t here equal to k m minus this is how we can uh, change the physical description into ordinary differential equation so class it comes to the end of week one part one video thank you class for your attention we'll see you later in week one part two video